get your toes wet, dive in. These tests do not define it. Oh, I forgot. I've never shared that with you guys before. Like who, why? This whole time I've been like busting my butt. No, 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 honey. Not necessary. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I teach third grade in Central California. So if you follow me on Instagram, I posted last week that I got the email from the CTC confirming that I'm officially a clear credential teacher in the state of California. So that's what motivated me to make this video because I had no idea what I was getting into. I swear I was told this is the last thing like seven times and it was never the last thing. So many flaming hoops you have to jump through, random money costs I didn't expect that I knew nothing about. And I remember when I started and sometimes in the middle of this program, still typing in how to become a credential teacher in California. And I would get very vague, but lots of information. And I just wanted straightforward, tell me what to do and I'll do it. So today, I'm gonna give it to you. I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know of how to become a clear credential teacher in California. Clear cut, straight to the point, let's do it. All right, so just a basic outline for you. First thing I'm gonna go over a basic, simple outline, beginning to end, how to become a credential teacher. Then I'm going to dive into the credential programs and induction. Third, I'll be going into all the details about all the tests you have to take, prices, where to take them, how to study for them, all that good stuff. Fourth, we're talking money. How much money you have to spend knowingly going into it, how much money you spend on little things unexpectedly. And this is where I will share how much I spent, out of pocket, unexpected, all added up. And last but not least, my final thoughts and opinions. All right, let's spill the tea. Okay, basic outline, you'll need a bachelor's degree. Take your CBES so you can start subbing. Join a credential program. During your credential program, you will end up having to take your CSETs about halfway through. Halfway through, you will also decide whether you want to do student teaching or intern route. Not paid, paid. Get your toes wet, dive in. Join and complete an induction program, which is two years and then you're good. Number two, digging deeper into all of that, you will need to get your bachelor's degree and you can get it in just about anything, but most teachers get theirs in liberal studies or liberal arts. Then, the only thing I really have to say about bachelor's degree stuff, even though you're going into school, getting your bachelor's, and knowing you wanna be a teacher and getting your credential, don't combine them. And let me tell you why. I've had some friends that did the bachelor's credential program in one because it seemed like a good deal. And what ended up happening was that they couldn't receive their bachelor's degree until they finished their credential, which is an extra year and a half or two years. And you need a bachelor's degree to start subbing. And this just threw a whole wrench in my friend's system. It was just a complete mess. So in my opinion, I would not, or I would do some extensive research or straight up ask your counselor, once I graduate with my bachelor's, can I receive it to take the CBEST and start subbing? Or do I have to wait until a certain part of my credential program? That is the biggest hiccup that I have seen teachers go through is combining that bachelor's and credential. So it might not be for all schools. I know one friend was through National University, which is where I went through. And then I'm pretty sure I had another friend have this problem going through a CSU. So ask your counselor. I would ask multiple counselors because I've been screwed over by counselors in the past, but don't be afraid to ask do your research. Yeah, all right, the credential portion. Pretty much the main things you need to check off in your credential is the CSETs, the RECA. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I must have just mentally blocked this out of my mind so I wouldn't have to relive it. The TPAs. Let me add the TPAs to my list because I will definitely forget them. The CSETs, the RECA, and TPAs. So I did mine online. In fact, I actually combined the credential and master's program which I still feel like I got screwed over a little bit because it was only like an additional five courses. And it's like, cool, but at the same time, on your teacher pay scale, you move over per how many units that you have. And since it was only five classes more, it was only like X amount of units. When really, if you go through like a whole master's program or something, you should get way more units. So when I talk to other teachers, they're like, you have your master's, you should be all the way over in the pay scale, and I'm not. So combination programs, look out for. Do your research. Still glad I did it because it's done, but man, I really wish I'd have got the units for it. So for getting into a credential program, I wouldn't say that you need to be so stressed about your grades to get into a good credential program and this, this, and that. It's not like getting into a college. A credential program is a credential program. It doesn't really matter where you got it from, in my experience. Just a piece of paper that they want to say you've done the work, you got it done, you paid the money, which we'll get to. But yeah, so I went through National University and it was... <sighs> It was good because the majority of it was online. I think there was three in-person classes that we had to take. So the fact that it was online was really cool and it was really easy to do while teaching. And especially my first year teaching, it was really nice to have, have a really simple credential program because I would've been so overwhelmed teaching and then having to go to all sorts of after school classes and have lots of homework assignments and stuff like that. Where with national, it was majority online. And for every class you can count on having a once a week discussion, 
which is like four sentences, having to respond back to three of other people's discussions with minimum of two sentences. So really not much, you have like a paragraph there. And then there'd be like one big assignment due at the end of the month because all classes were one month. So those were the pros. And those big assignments, I don't think they really went through them very much. So I remember my final paper was probably the worst paper I've ever written. And I got 100%. And I was like, this whole time I've been like busting my butt, stressing out. That's the worst paper I've written in my whole academic career. And I got 100%. So don't stress yourself out too much. No, 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 honey, not necessary. Just get it done. You don't need that extra stress. So I would say online is a little better in my experience just because it was way less time consuming. It was easy to do while I was teaching. If you're going into an actual school, let me tell you, once you start teaching, you will be exhausted. Okay, so my credential program that was online, we pretty much had an introductory course and then three other foundational courses, so four courses total. Then you had to pass your CSET. So if you're going into a multiple subject, there are three CSETs that you need to take. I will talk about that in the next section. So you need to have those passed before you can move on to take the rest of your courses. Soon after that is when you get to decide if you wanna do the student teacher route or the intern route. That's sort of why you need to have those CSETs passed. So once you get to decide here, student teaching and intern is both a one year program. And that pretty much means student teaching, you will be in a classroom the whole time, but you will not be the main teacher. You will start off observing and then little by little you will start taking over. So you might start off teaching one lesson a week and you will gradually move up and start doing more and taking more responsibility. By the end of the year, you should be running that class for the full day. And this is great in theory because it kind of gets your toes wet, gets you comfortable. So you're observing a lot and trying out new things. You have that comfortability of like that other teachers there to jump in and save you, to help you out, give you tips and pointers and stuff like that. However, that might not be the case for everyone. I've heard from multiple teachers that they went into it with that mindset to kind of slowly get the experience and get more confident in it. And their teacher just kind of threw them under the bus within the first week of like, here you go, take my class. And to me, that's even more stressful knowing that someone should be having your back and they're not really in. No, thank you. And big thing with that one is you don't get paid for student teaching. Intern route. You are thrown into the wolves, my friends. This is what I did, and oh man. But basically, you're a teacher. You have a classroom, you have 27 kiddos, however many kiddos, and it is just all eyes on you, my friend. And talk about stressful, because you have no idea what you're walking into, unless you subs. So intern, you have your own class. It is all yours to run, which is a little easier because you're making your own rules. It's your class, your students, you have control. And if you mess up on something, there's not another teacher there to call you out. So you can just learn from it, move on, which is kind of what I need. Cause I feel like I get embarrassed and shy and I will mess up worse if I know that someone's there watching me. So, but when you're interning, you will get a mentor. And most of the time you will get an intern from your credential program. And then you will have one on site at the school. That's at least how mine was. So you should have at least one person that is working with you on the regular, observing you, helping you with whatever you need help with. The bonus with interning is that you get paid. You get paid a teacher salary. So where I'm at, they paid according to just like their normal pay scale bachelors and additional units. There are some though, when I went into job fairs, it would say at the very bottom that like if you were an intern or something like that, they would have like a base pay, which is like just the starting pay or lower even. So maybe food for thought, something to look at at your next job fair. But either way, it's better than not getting paid but the decision is on you. So I know a lot of teachers who have grown so much within student teaching that they were way more prepared and less anxious going into the classroom and their first year went way more smooth. But honestly, I'm super glad that I went the intern route because I feel like I got two or three years experience within that one year. And I'm just that kind of person, like throw me in, I'll figure out how to swim. So in your credential, you'll be taking classes, not necessarily difficult classes, shouldn't be a lot of work, especially if you are in the classroom, it's a little easier. My first couple classes, I hadn't been in the classroom, so I was having to make it up and that's a lot harder. So the more involved you are in the classroom, the easier this will be. And again, it's more simple kind of busy work, just trying to get you to reflect on stuff. But the main tough pieces of this credential are the C sets you have to pass and the TPAs. Anyway, wrapping up this second section, after you've passed all four TPAs, you finish your credential courses, you, my friend, have your preliminary credential, which means you're just not credentials yet and you have two more years. So nothing really changes. You need to join a two year induction program. Luckily, the induction program is way less work than all the stuff you had to do before. So for induction, it's a two year program. Pretty much this is just two years to make sure that you are competent and at least a decent teacher. With induction, you pretty much need to take three to five classes per year. But these classes are different because they're not homework. They're more like seminars that you need to show up to. 
But with each year, because it's a two year program, you have to do four ILPs, which is pretty simple and basically just a breakdown of like, I wanna focus on this part of my teaching, things I can do to improve on that part of teaching. Your mentor's coming in, giving you tips, observing you, seeing what you can do, and then how you grew, what you wanna do next. Those are pretty much your ILPs. And they're all building up. So this whole year, you are building this ILP. So there's like first section, second section, da da da. And you'll have a final presentation, which is a super simple presentation. Pretty much you're sitting at a table with like three other people who are all going to present their projects and what they focused on this year. You know, have one person that times you for like five minutes or something and then just be like, good job, you did it. And there's your induction. So you're gonna have to do that each year, so two times. Okay, pretty sure that's all I have to say about the credential induction thing. But if I miss something and you have questions, comment down below or feel free to DM me on my Instagram, teach you something good, and I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Okay, so moving on to tests. Tests. All right, tests. First test you have to take is the CBEST. This is California Basic Education Skill Test on reading, writing, and math. So heads up, this is the easiest test that you're going to take. Sorry. Like I said, three sections, reading, writing, and math. You do not have to pass all three at the same time. So pretty much if you've passed reading and writing and you didn't pass math, you can go back just to test on that math section. You have four hours to take this test and it takes two weeks to get the results back. If you take it in person, it is $41. If you're going to take it online, it is $61. And online doesn't mean online in the comforts of your own home. Online means you have to drive to a facility, you have to check in like you're checking into a prison system, and then you may take the test on their computer. So, still not fun. Next, you have your CSET. So if you are a multiple subject, you will definitely have three CSETs, which have at least two subjects in each one. So CSET number one is reading and history. CSET number two is math and science. CSET number three is the arts. So you have the option to take all of these tests at once in a five hour time span. And it's cheaper that way, of course. So if you do it that way, it only costs you $247 instead of 300. Because each test costs $100 if you do it separately. Okay, now breaking down the tests. In test one, which is reading and history, you'll have 52 multiple choice questions and four essay questions. Uh, same for test number two, which is science and math. And for test number three, the arts, you'll have 39 multiple choice and three essay questions. So you can take them all at once in five hours. If you take them separately, uh, test one and two are three hours and test three, you get two hours and 15 minutes. And if you take them separately, they each cost $99. And you won't get the results back for about three months. And if you need extra results, that's an extra $10, which you will, because you only send those off to your credential program and maybe even a school that you're wanting to apply for. Fun stuff. So these C-sets are the opposite of the C-best. These are the hardest tests that you're going to take. Uh, for me, they were at least. So so to be totally real, the first time I took my C-sets, I did the all three at once and I did not pass. Granted, it was a very, how long should I be doing this part? Um, okay, basically, um, uh, it, it's hard to say out loud. So I took all three tests at once. I did not pass because I didn't even study. Uh, my friend had died the week before, so I was not studying. My mind was nowhere near studying or this test. But I showed up because I paid almost $300 for it and I wanted to see how I would do anyway. <sighs> I've never shared that with you guys before. But yeah, so didn't do terrible though. The history section I did the worst on and I had to take that test three different times. But the other ones, I, I wasn't too far off. I didn't do as bad as I thought I would do for not studying at all and having like zero focus during the test. So I was very impressed with myself, to be honest. So anyway, failed all of them, had to retake all of them. So you can start adding up the math on that one. I ended up passing the math and science one and passing the arts one, but that freaking history one, I swear I had to take that test three times. I, I lived with my parents at the time and the only way for me to pass this test was I had to take a teacher test prep. So there's a website, teacher test prep. And I'll go over that in a minute, but I had to take the class in person and then I made my whole mirror just, it looks like a crime scene show. Have you ever seen when they're like, oh, this person connects to this person with the yarn and all that stuff? That was my mirror, but I passed. So that's all that really matters there. But yeah, so those are the hardest tests. I would just go for it, see how you do, because taking those teacher test prep classes cost an extra $175 per section. So if I were you, I would take the test, see how you do, and then go back, pay the $175 to see which courses you should take uh, because they do help a lot. Certain credential programs do have classes that are supposed to prepare you for the CSETs and the RECA and stuff like that. I guess mine didn't directly correlate, I don't know, but these teacher test preps really helped because they straight up have an old test, are going through it question by question, telling you even just this simple vocabulary that gives you hints to the answers that no normal person would get. Then they break down the essay questions, which are the most, ah, uh, like who, 
why so the essay questions they need to be like written a certain way like they have specific expectations they have a whole outline that they want for their essay questions that they don't tell you about unless you pay to take this course then they tell you and break it down for you so that's what you're paying 175 dollars for my friend so it was worth it because i passed sorry if this is probably stressing you out it it's not that stressful. Just do the best you can. Don't beat yourself up if you don't pass because the majority of us don't. No one's judging you on it, so don't beat yourself up. So yeah, just like we tell our kiddos, or if you're not a teacher, you will tell your kiddos, these tests do not define you. Stands for our students, stands for us too. So those are the C sets. Next, towards the end of your credential, you have to take the RECA. The RECA is a Reading Instruction Competence Assessment. So this one I took twice. And the first time I was in my internship, so I had just started teaching. I didn't know what I was doing. And this is about reading and instructing reading. And this test primarily focuses on first grade and fifth grade. And the C sets, I believe, primarily focus on third grade and fifth grade, from what I remember correctly. Oh, there's also lots of Facebook groups that give you tips and pointers on the C sets and will give you really good tips on the C sets, if you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, so the RECA is $171. It says 165, I paid 171. That's if you wanna do the written portion. There's a video portion, which I, in my experience, haven't heard anyone do, but that's $60, plus a $70 fee to submit it. Then why say it's $60? So that ends up being $130. Like I said, the first time I took it, I was in the beginning of my first year teaching. I didn't really know what I was doing yet. I was just learning how to teach reading. So I had no idea what I was talking about. And needs to say, I didn't pass. But when I went back, just at the very end of my first year teaching, I passed. It was like the questions just made so much more sense because at first it's just like all these teacher terms and it's like, I don't know what this means. But then by the end of the year, it starts making a little more sense. I also took the teacher test prep on the RECA as well, just because I didn't have enough time to fail and have to retake it again. I wanted to get it done. So I paid, took the class in LA. I was still not confident going into the test, but I passed. So I feel like this is another strong point I need to make about these tests. Walking out of each and every one of those tests, there was not one time that I felt like I passed. Every time I walked out, it was like, well, that was terrible. I definitely failed. It's just part of what you gotta do to get it done and you will get it done. You will pass, just work your little butt off. You'll do great, don't worry about it. So TPAs have changed since I last took them. When I took them, there was a four TPAs that you had to take and the fourth one was like a video one. But now there's only two. So I'm figuring they just pretty much condensed the four into the two. Cause why would they make it easier for us? So anyway, there's two tests. They each cost $150. And the first one's on learning about students and planning instruction. And the second one is on assessment driven instruction. So those are the two TPAs. I don't have much to tell you since I don't know what these ones are like, but I know with my four, they just wanted so much detail. Like it down to like, and then I'm gonna say this, and then they're gonna say this, and I'm gonna say this, and yay! And it feels ridiculous. That's so not my way of lesson planning or doing anything really, but fake it till you make it. And then you're sharing your differentiations for like every little thing, and it ends up being about like a 30, 40 something page paper. Grand, you're like writing in like a little column, but I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of work. But I passed all of them first try. So unlike talking with a stranger, feel free to overshare. That's what they're looking for. So for all the tests that I had to take, so that's the C best, C sets, retaking the C sets, taking the C set one like another two times, the RECA, and then the TPAs, $1,254. Okay, since we're talking money, let's move into the cost of everything, shall we? So your bachelors, uh, I'm not going to count money on that one because I don't know where you're at, what you're doing, but the credential portion. So my credential portion. I did it online and it was the combination of credential and masters. And I couldn't find the exact price when I tried to go back and look. So I just went and searched how much debt I'm in and it ended up coming out to $37,817. Granted, this was online and I've heard that national can be really expensive. So take that in mind. I don't wanna stress myself out by talking about student loans, so I'm not. Let's talk options. So this is Cal State Teach. This program is in a lot of CSUs, but not all, it's primarily online. This total ends up coming out to about $10,990. I don't know how it ends up being that cheap, so it seems a little suspect to me, to be honest. Here's just a regular CSU. This is CSU Long Beach. And as you can see, the tuition ends up coming out to about 20,000 to 25,000, depending on where you are living. Okay, so this is the last one I'm gonna show you. This is San Diego State University. This is one of the most difficult state schools in California to get into, so the tuition is a little higher, which ends up coming out to anywhere between 20 21,000 and 27,000. Breaking down the other money pieces. I went over the test, which was a total of $1,254. The test preps, which I took 
a CSET test prep for the history one that I could not freaking pass in my life. So that's $170. The Rika test prep was $200. So that came out to a total of $375. And of course the CTC wants money for any time that you're trying to give them a paper. So your application for this credential program is $100 in itself. Then you need a certificate of clearance, which is $50. That's pretty much like your fingerprints. And then when I finally got my clear credential, I had to pay them $120. And then my friend over at the caffeinated classroom reminded me that we have to repay that fee every five years just to keep our credential. So are you ready to find out the total amount of money that I had spent on unexpected expenses just to get my teaching credential? Drum roll, please. $2,854, woohoo! Okay, so despite the money being frustrating and having to jump through all these hoops of fire, is it worth it? If you're wanting to be a teacher to have all these breaks and be able to travel on your summer vacations, remember, you're most likely not getting paid enough to travel on your summer vacations. If you love kids and your heart is in teaching, it is absolutely worth it because this is one of the most rewarding jobs, clearly not in money, but in all sorts of other ways. So if your heart is in it, yes, it is totally worth it. I would jump through 10 more hoops of fire. I don't want to, but I would, because I truly feel like teaching is a calling. And granted, I didn't know I wanted to be a teacher until I was like 20, 21. So it's not like ever since I was a little girl. No, 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 not always the case. But make sure you're going into it for the right reasons. Otherwise, all this stuff, probably not gonna feel worth it to you. All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. If I missed something, you guys have questions or you wanna share your credential story, feel free to comment down below or DM me on my Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.